How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, part 22. Common problems when working with stainless steel. And another common problem is I only have one eccentric. When I bought the reversing valve gear casting set from Stuart Models, I never thought it only comes with one eccentric because they assume that you already have the other eccentric on the engine to start with. But as I bought this engine without any valve gear whatsoever, I'm a bit stuck. I've ordered the part from Stuart Models, but for some reason it hasn't arrived, which is most unusual. Normally Stuart's deliveries are very quick, but I think this week they must be at the Dorset Steam Fair. Anyway, I've got plenty to be going on with to keep me occupied, and I'm pleased to say there is quite a lot more model steam work in the pipeline. To continue with the Stuart 5A rebuild while I wait for the parts to arrive, I'm going to make some studs. Now you may think, oh no, this is going to be really boring, and perhaps it is. So I suppose you could always go out and get yourself a tattoo. That was a reference to something that I said in the last video near the end. But for now, back to this video. What I'm doing at the moment is adjusting the position of the die in the die holder. I'm making sure that the die is fully expanded. This is a 2BA die. And it's just what I need to cut the threads on the end of these pins that hold the valve gear together. And in this clip I'm showing you a very simple and logical and easy way of marking the end of the pins so that you know how long the thread needs to be on the end of the pins. And this may seem quite simplistic but it works. A bit like me really, I'm simplistic but I work also. And now it's time to thread the end of the pin. I'm using some of my special lubricant. This is my steam oil, rapeseed oil and machine oil mixture. And I'm doing this job entirely by hand. And I'm doing it this way because I want to show you something. And if I had the lathe in back gear and it was running automatically, you wouldn't be able to quite see what I'm talking about. As the die advances down the piece of steel cutting the thread, you can see how the swarf is accumulating around the front of the die. Whenever I thread anything by hand, whether it be using a tap or a die, I never do it in a continuous motion. You will see that I do a couple of rotations in a positive direction and then I back off the die to clear the swarf. It's most important to get a really good quality thread, not one that's all chewed up and chaveled. And as a beginner, I really struggled with this. I used to make some terrible threads. And some of the experts that I spoke to in those days were giving nothing away. They weren't really telling me freely how to do it. Anyway, things have changed. Everything I put in these videos is based on my own experience. What you're watching on the screen is me actually doing the job. I'm not staging it for the video. Now and again, though, I will make something badly just to illustrate the point. This is not bad. This is a very nice thread. As you can see, it's really clean and it looks the part. And just to show how good this thread is, I'm going to run a 2BA nut onto it. And it's really good. No shake, no wobble. This is a really good thread. So I have the die perfectly adjusted and it's not a problem. This next part is a top technical tip for beginners. I'm threading the other end of the pin in exactly the same way that I've just shown. And you can clearly see that for every revolution or so, I back it off slightly to clear the swarf. So it's maybe one or two revolutions and then back off. You can feel when the die is starting to struggle a little bit. So for all intents and purposes, I've just cut the thread in exactly the same way as I cut the previous thread. And as you know, that was really good. The nut went on it perfectly. Near the end of the operation, I decided to just tighten the chuck slightly because I was a little concerned that the pin may be rotating in the chuck. But in the end, it wasn't. It was just me being a bit paranoid. The die holder is right up against the chuck, so the thread is cut. So I'm just unscrewing the die holder from the newly cut thread. I'm doing this nice and slowly because I don't want to chew up the thread that I've just created. Just a few more revolutions to uncover the thread and we can have a look at it. What's this? The thread is terrible. And when I fit the nut to it, it doesn't get any better. What's going on? So it's back to the drawing board, I get another piece of stainless steel and I'm going to start again. But before I do, I think it's a good idea if I clean out the die. As you can see, all the swarf from the cutting operations, bearing in mind this die has cut two threads, one which was perfect, 
and one which was not so perfect. When threading stainless steel, it is vital to clean out the dye very frequently, and after following this simple rule, every one of the threads that are made on these two pins are perfect. For this next job, I have to make a very special stud. This stud supports the anchor link that allows the reversing lever to be locked in place, and it's much longer than the existing studs in the steam chest. One end of the stud has a 2BA thread on it which is the normal length and the other end is much longer, and here it is. To illustrate this problem, I did this in one go. This was one pass with the die, same principle. I cleaned out the die very thoroughly before I started, and then I went down the work. And it was looking alright for the first part, and when it got to the middle it went a bit wrong, and then for some reason it started to be okay again, so what's going on here I wonder. There are two things that are causing this problem, and the first thing is, we're working with stainless steel. Stainless steel is a very strange kind of metal, and it work hardens very quickly. If you drill stainless steel, and don't keep the drill moving, by applying a constant positive pressure, the stainless steel will work harden, and then the incredible amount of friction will cause the metal to start to glow red, and the drill bit will also glow red, and immediately stop cutting, and that is a drill bit ruined. So you may be thinking, why am I talking about drilling? Well I'm not, I'm talking about work hardening. And what's happening here with the die is that it's filling up very quickly with work hardened stainless steel. And then in no time at all, apart from the die cutting the thread, the work hardened pieces of stainless steel also try to cut as well. But they're not going to cut a thread, they're going to destroy any thread that you've already cut. At the beginning of this section I said there were two reasons why the thread was being destroyed. It's the work hardened pieces of stainless steel that are not getting away and instead are destroying the thread. But the other reason is a 2BA thread is quite a coarse thread. So the chippings coming off the piece of steel are quite large and the three holes in the die are unable to contain this quantity of swarf. If you're cutting a piece of stainless steel that is a finer pitch thread, for instance quarter by 40 or quarter by 32, then it's a little bit different, the chippings are a lot smaller and they do tend to fall out of the holes, but as you can clearly see here, most of the pieces of swarf that have been cut from the stainless steel, which are now work hardened, are staying firmly in the three holes in the die. And potentially this can damage the thread. The only way out of it is to frequently withdraw the die and thoroughly clean it. Get rid of all the swarf in the holes, and then put some more lubricant on, and go back in again, to cut the rest of the thread. This is 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter stainless steel, and I find the best way of cutting successful threads over a longer distance, like three quarters of an inch, is to do it a quarter of an inch at a time. After every quarter of an inch, withdraw the die, thoroughly clean it, then apply more lubrication to the existing thread that you've cut, run the die down another quarter of an inch, and after that, once again withdraw the die, clean it thoroughly, and as before, always lubricate the existing thread before reintroducing the die. Then all you have to do is wind the freshly cleaned die down the existing thread and cut the last quarter of an inch. Quite simple, really. I'm fairly confident that I will get lots of comments on this from experts. And yes, I am aware there are many different types of die holders and many different types of dies. Please be aware that I make these videos specifically to try and help beginners in the home workshop, not to compete with major industries. And here we have the end product in my home workshop, a really nice thread that takes the nut without any shake whatsoever, a good quality thread. And this is what you need, a really good quality thread that will not strip if you put any pressure on it and will last a long time. To fit the stud through into the cylinder block, I'm using a pair of lock nuts. This is the best way to fit studs. And once the stud is in the correct position, undo the lock nuts, remove the end lock nut, then turn the other nut so that it secures the steam chest cover to the steam chest. Then all you need to do is fit the anchor link, followed by the nut that you've just removed to hold it in place, and that's it for the moment. And as always, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.